What up, everybody? This is your boy Theo Pence here. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss any Run Your Race content. What up, everybody? This is your boy Theo Pinson again with another episode of Run Your Race with my boy AJ Richardson, who is not here today. He's working, so we give him a pass. But, <laughs> hey, listen, it's a big time pod today, people. It's a big time pod today because we got a fellow Tar Heel. <laughs> not just a fellow Tar Heel. We got a fellow champ. <laughs> hey, listen, y'all know what we do in North Carolina. We win chips. <laughs> That's the standard over there. But we got a very special guest here today. 14 year pro uh, has done, all, done it all. Bonafide winner. All I know him, know him for is winning. Cause he came back and pick up and was winning and cheating the whole time. <laughs> hey, every game we played, every time Ray came, listen, let me just let, let y'all know who's here. We got Raymond Felton here today. <laughs> What's up, big dog? Man, man, appreciate you coming oh, on, brother. Man, I'm just gonna set the record yeah. straight right now. And everybody who was on the team with me and played against Ray and pick up, he gonna do anything and everything to win the game. If it's a foul. No, if it's not a foul, it's a foul. It's a foul. Because we got to get the ball back. We got to get the bucket. Got to. But, <laughs> By any means hey, necessary. Hey, listen, at this point, he can just admit it. <laughs> at this point, he can admit it. But look, man, Ray, I appreciate you coming on, man. I'm very excited. Uh, you've had an unbelievable career. Um, you've done it at the highest level. You play with some of the best players that ever played this game. So, and coming from where you come, come from and getting to where you are, is the, I think the story needs to be heard. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get into it. So Ray, where you from? Um, how did you start? When did you start playing basketball, and how did it all get started for you? Man, a small town, man. South Carolina kid. Mm -hmm. Population of probably about 2,000, 2,500 people, man. You know, very small town. We was a one A school. My daddy put the ball in my hand at the age of four, and it just went from there. I loved it. Um, I got an opportunity. You know, as I came through high school to play with um, Beach Ball Select, and um, it was the AAU team out of Myrtle Beach, and just... Let me ask you this first before you get there. Mm -hmm. Did you play any other sport? We always ask this. Oh, and, yeah, man. I played play? baseball. I played football. I was a quarterback and a free safety, and um, I was a pitcher and a shortstop, and I can, I can, I can hit it. It's probably my best sport was baseball. Baseball, really? Baseball okay. was probably my best sport, even even over basketball. Like I could have, I could have went pros playing baseball. Really? But I just didn't. I didn't love it. I just did it because I was talented at it. And then once I got a sophomore in high school, I had to make a decision: Do I want to play football? Do I want to play baseball? Do I want to play basketball? Of course, you know, I chose I chose basketball. Let everything else go. What was what was the deciding factor for you? Just the love of the game. Mm -hmm. I love basketball. You know, even through all the other sports, I kept playing basketball, kept playing basketball. It was something that I just couldn't let go. I just had a certain passion for it. So mm -hmm. I just, that was the main reason, just the love of it. So if you didn't play, let's say you just said you picked the other sport, it would have been baseball? It would have been baseball, hands down. You didn't like hands football down. like that? Man, like all that contact, man. Yeah. Hit, man. <laughs> Shit. You see these big old dudes, yeah, man? yeah, for sure, you know, yeah. I, defense I, alignments, I man. They two hundred ninety-five pounds running four fives. Yeah, man, I'm not dealing with it that. No, I'm no cool. Sense. Yeah, it I'm cool no on that. Sense whatsoever. <laughs> I'm cool on that. When was the? There had to be a moment, and we talk about this a lot on this pod that we mm -hmm. we look back at moments where you figure it out. Mm -hmm. You figure it out. Like I can really do this at the highest level. When right. was that moment for you? I think that moment was for me, man. My sophomore, after my sophomore year, I went out to uh, big time Adidas. That's probably one of the biggest tournaments back in my time. Big time, big time Las Vegas tournament for Adidas, and then um, Pump and Run was right after that in L.A. Mm -hmm. And I just got a chance to play against different guards like T.J. Ford and just different people, man. I got a chance to play against them, and I held my own. And you know, some situations, you know, I got the best of them. And I was like, these these guys are supposed to be some of the best guards in the country, and I'm holding my own. And in some situations, playing better, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like you know I got a chance to do something special here. Mm -hmm. So you know, really after that summer, you know, and I actually got offered that summer by Carolina from Matt Darty. Where's you know, what year is this? My um, the summer of my sophomore year, going into my junior year. Okay. And um, Coach Darty actually offered me. You know, off off those two tournaments, mm -hmm. he was there to see Jackie Manuel play at um at a tournament, and he said he kept seeing a kid um beside him on another court do some things, and you know 
he just turned around and started watching me. He said some of the other coaches started turning their chairs around and watching what I was doing. And, you know, he offered me that summer. That was what, mm -hmm. that's what was crazy. Yeah. And that was a dream come true. You know, I've always been a kid that wanted to go to Carolina growing up in the Carolinas. Mm -hmm. That was like the dream school. Not South Carolina Gamecocks, <laughs> not Clemson. <laughs> no. You know, it was not UNC. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It was UNC. So, you know, I got the opportunity. I Man, I kind of committed early. I ain't even really think about no other schools, no other teams. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was a five-star recruit, but, you know, I didn't really go on no other visits. I didn't go nowhere else. The only place I went to that. was Georgia, and I did that to go with my one of my best friends. You know, he was taking that visit too, so I went on that visit just to go with him. Outside of that, the Carolina was my only visit. I mean, obviously South Carolina because it was yeah. right up the street, Yeah, but I would never go in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, respect. <laughs> I did that all the time. Hey, I went to dumb SEC schools. <laughs> Just to go to the football game. Yeah, I feel I you. can tell them that now. But <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, I think something that I want you to kind of explain, and mm -hmm. uh, like I said to start the pod, all I know you for is winning. Mm -hmm. And you do whatever it takes and whatever need to be done for your team to win. And they even that putting the ball in the basket, like you're just a junkyard dog. So mm -hmm. what is, where does that come from? Where does that where does that, how does that tick for you? Just getting it out of the mud, man. You know, yeah. where I'm from, you know, we we didn't have gyms like that. We didn't have, you know, sometimes we didn't even have cement basketball courts. All we had was a backyard with grass mm -hmm. and dirt, yeah. you know. So we, that's why we use that term, get it out of the mud, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because even when sometimes when it's raining, that dirt gets muddy and mm -hmm. we still out there hooping. We still out there Don't getting matter. it in. You know what I'm saying? So like, just for me, just having that dog mentality, just growing up the way I did and not having, you know, certain opportunities that maybe a kid in a bigger city had, you know, I had to, I, I had to go get it differently. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just always had that dog, that grit, that grind about me. So my, um, when I got into high school, I used to look at the, the older guys play and my daddy was actually coaching at the time. Before I got there, he kind of stopped coaching because he didn't really want to be a part of that, you know, that, that. dad, son. Yeah, yeah, People saying that, you 100%. know, he, he showing favoritism, so he kind of stepped down. And um, I told him, I said, when I get up there, we're going to win. We're going to win the championship. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We had the opportunity to win four, but we didn't, but we won two. I got back-to-back -back my junior and senior year on um, state championships down there. So, you know, I just always had that will, man, to just – win. I always had that, whatever it takes, diving on the floor, you know, playing defense on the best guy on the other side, whatever I needed to do, you know, and most of the time I needed to score, but sometimes, man, I didn't care about that. I was just trying to do whatever we had to do to win. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter. Mm -hmm. So, that, hey, listen, I know that from firsthand, seen it myself. My question is to you is, knowing you, you said already, you knew you were going, you wanted to go to UNC. Mm -hmm. Once that offer came across the table, or you got that phone call, hey, listen, we want you to come here. There was no other place that could have got you there. No other place. The only place I could have went to was, was Kentucky, mm -hmm. and that's where Tubby Smith was coaching there. Mm -hmm. That's the only other coach that I would have played for. I love Tubby Smith. I love him as a coach. I just love everything about him. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I got a chance to meet him, sit down and talk with him. So he was the only other person, if things didn't work out with Carolina, that I would have went to and played for was him. Got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. And what was the what was the nail in the coffin for you? I mean, look at the history. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying, look at the history of Carolina. Everybody that you know that paved the way for us. You know, what I'm saying before we came through, and um, just you know, MJ. You know, then you got guys like Vince and you know Twan and you know Jerry Stackhouse, Rasheed Wallace, Shaman was like my big bro. Took me over, took me under his wing, and kind of just like helped me out and grow. As a young man, him mm -hmm. and Lavelle, mm -hmm. you know, shout out to him and Lavelle Moten over sure. there at NCCU, over there at Central. Thanks. You know, those two guys, when I got to Carolina, really molded me and just helped me to become basically a professional, man. Yeah. They really just showed me that, look, if you want to take this to the next level, even after making it to Carolina, if you want to go further than this, you have to stay in that gym. Mm -hmm. You got to stay in that gym. I know you want to go hang out with your, 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 your teammates and party and whatever, but – you looking for something bigger, you got to stay in that gym. And I, I, that really stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And I stayed in the gym. You know, sometimes I won't even go out. I'll just be like, man, I'm going ahead and give me some extra shots up. You know what I'm saying? And that just, you know, that, that, that all that paved off, all that paved the way for what I wanted to do, which was, you know, take my mom and daddy out of, out of working, mm -hmm. you know, to tell them, look, y'all can retire. 
you know, things is going to be different now. For sure. Mm -hmm. That's big time. I mean, to have that at a young age is, and really just looking back on the OGs who helped us out, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know for sure I was more mentally prepared <laughs> because y'all came back every summer. Yeah. Y'all come back every, y'all came back every summer and we, we just picking y'all brain every single year of like what to expect. And we're playing against pros. So at, the, at that time I got to the pros after my fourth year, I'm like <laughs> in, the, in the ground rolling. Yeah. So it, it's yeah. big time. I think that's the, that's the beauty of Carolina having no those vets and those OGs coming back. And, uh, shit, I'm OG now. Shit, it's been. Yeah. Damn, this years. Since I went to school, I, I, so. That's how that's how that's how quick time goes, man. Sure you know, God, you go I from, believe, you know, I went from my first year in the league at at Charlotte, the Charlotte Bobcats, to when I got to OKC year thirteen. Yeah, they was calling me Unk. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, man, damn, yeah. I, like, am it's I crazy. that old, or is, is this is this already at this point where I'm on my way out? You yeah. know, because you on your way out, they start calling you Unk. Yeah. Oh, they yeah, start calling sure. you Unk. They start calling you OG. You on your way out. Yeah. That, it's that's, about that time. It's about that time. Hey, listen. They was calling me Unk this year. I said, oh, <laughs> hell no. Stop that shit. Stop that shit right now. <laughs> nah, it's it's a cool feeling, though. It's, like I said, you gain the respect over the years, and that's a good feeling. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. But it is. So, shit, you decide to go to Carolina. You get to Carolina. What was your welcome to college moment? <sighs> Because wait, you went there with D Dowdy, uh Coach Darty. Coach Darty for uh -huh. So you was you only went two. Three. You went three years. I went three. I had, two years, I had two years with Coach Williams. Coach Williams. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you gotta give me your welcome to college moment with Coach Darty and then your welcome to college moment with Coach Williams. <sighs> my, I'm gonna be honest with you, my freshman year, bro, was was a I ain't gonna say a breeze, but it was it was kinda easy. You know really? what I'm saying? Because Coach Doherty kind of let me let you go. hoop. Yeah. He let me go. I got freshman of the year. Like, I got all of that, man. I came back. I was a preseason All-American. Like, it was like, you know, it really was no struggle. Yeah. You know, outside of, you know, you know the conditioning side, all yeah. that stuff <laughs> that you got to you gotta get used to coming from it. high school to 100%. college. But as far as hooping, man, I feel like I, I had the green light. So I played against anybody. It was like you might have a problem because I got yeah. a green light over here. You can't but, you know, my it. welcome to college came when Coach Williams came. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, and that's my guy. You yeah, know? hey, listen, love, love him to death. Love, love him to death, man, but that was my welcome <laughs> to college when Coach Roy Williams came over there, man. That man had me so frustrated at times, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, to the point where my sophomore year, I even thought about leaving and going to the draft mm -hmm. early. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was like a late first-round pick, and it was just like, man, listen, man. But we had a, a great conversation, man. Like, like man to man, like um, father to son, and it changed it changed everything. Yeah, it changed how close we became. It changed me as a player. Yep. It changed our team. You know what I'm saying? And it was just like everything just went, 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 just went. It just went further and further from that point. And he told me what he felt like I needed to work on to become a better player and become a better, you know, pro if I wanted to be that. And I told him what I needed for him mm -hmm. as a player. Yeah. I said, I need you to give me this team. Mm -hmm. I said, instead of you stopping me 24-7, running plays and doing all of that, I said, Coach, let me get this team. Give me this team. Trust me. Trust me to be your eyes out there on this court. Trust me to lead these, lead these guys. Like, give that to me. And he did. You know, he trusted me more. I did what he wanted me to do. He told me to work on my three-point shot and get be more consistent. He told me to he wanted me to work on picking guys full, picking up guys full court on defense. So that whole summer, I guarded Shaman Williams that whole summer and wouldn't let nobody else touch him. Nobody. You can ask Shaman. My after my sophomore season, bro, I guarded Shaman the whole year, the whole summer. Any pro came in there, I was guarding them because mm -hmm. I wanted to work on my defense. Yeah, I wanted to get stronger at that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, everything that he told me I needed to get better at, I felt like I, I took it to the next level, and that helped take our team to the next level as as the leader of that team, as the point guard. So, um, he he definitely was the coach that gave me 
my welcome to college. Yeah. He was he he came in there my sophomore year and was just he was on me. And yeah. I understood. Like I listen, these kids now are, whole, are totally different oh, than the yeah. way than the way we came up. Mm-hmm. I took all the criticism, I took the yelling, I took all the things that I felt like I didn't do nothing wrong, but he mm-hmm. still was on me. I still took it like okay, he's trying to get the best out of me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I never took it personal. And I love that man to this day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I st- still talk to him to this day. So, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, he just was on my ass, man. <laughs> hey, listen, Coach Williams is a... You you don't like the... I know people struggle with, like, saying, like, a father. He really was like a father figure. Yeah. Because yeah. he really was, like, he genuinely cared about Every single one of us. Everybody. Regardless yeah. if you thought he pissed at you all the time, he <laughs> genuinely cared about every single one of us yeah. and wanted us to succeed. Yeah. No matter if you was a dickhead to him or you was any, any per- like. That's what pisses me off about my teammate. Yeah. And hearing some of the, you know, shit that he says. Exactly. You know, it kind of mm-hmm. pisses me off because, like, this man, even through all the BS that you took him took him through and sometimes took us through as a team. We still roll with you. He still roll with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so for him to say some of the things I hear him say on the podcast that they're doing and just things that he's done in the past, it just pisses me off because none of us has never turned our back on you. Never. You've always went your own way. Mm-hmm. And we was cool with that. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But we still always had your back. Mm-hmm. But now once you started to mess with the legacy of Coach Williams and the legacy of what we've done mm-hmm. as a team, now we got a problem with mm-hmm. you. You know, so I never had a problem with the dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I do now. Yeah. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I'm not gonna let you sit here and say nothing about a man that I know helped all of us, mm-hmm. you know, achieve a dream that we all wanted to do, mm-hmm. which was get to the NBA, mm-hmm. which was be successful at the mm-hmm. college level. And we won a championship, bro. Mm-hmm. What, are you, what are you talking about? Like, it, it, it you went lottery. Sense. What are you talking about? Like, hey, who you think was making calls for you? Come on, man. Come on, dog. So, so, <laughs> so <laughs> what are we talking about? So, bro, when I see that, I, like, I really just, people are like, man, what do you think? I'm like, I just, I say he's a dickhead, bro. Yeah. I say, I have nothing else to say. I say, because I give the dude his flowers. The dude's one of the best scorers that I've ever in my life played with. Mm-hmm. And I've played with Melo, Dirk, PG, Russ, like, I mean, the list goes on. I can name a whole bunch of people yeah. that I play with that can put that ball in the basket. Mm-hmm. Jamal Crawford, like Jesus. just bona fide scores, <laughs> yeah. bro. Yeah, this that, this dude here is still in my top one, two, or three. Mm-hmm. Like I'm serious. Like that's 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 the level of scoring that he can do. I never take that from him. But the shit he do off the court, just uh-huh. can't, uh-huh. I can't rock with it. It doesn't bro. make sense. Uh, just. I've met damn near everybody on the championship team. Damn near everybody. All y'all rock with each other, still talk to each other to, to this, this day. day. <laughs> and to get a different response, to get one person one. that felt a certain way about the whole team, but everybody has a different story. Like, like where were you at in this whole journey that we went on? Because y'all jump, y'all literally, like I said, Carolina was always what Carolina was. Yeah. But y'all jump started the Coach Williams era to the extent of him being the head coach. Yeah. Because once, once you win that chip, oh, it goes it goes to another. It level. goes to another level and at we, that point. And he won his first one with us. Yeah, exactly. You know, so That's what I'm saying, and it that, it just kills me. Good. Then for him to, I heard for him me to hear him say that is that that we hated on him. Yeah. I said what. Well, that was mind boggling. I'm like, hate it, dude. I was the point guard, so exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go and start right there. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna start right there. Like, hate it. <laughs> How many times I don't fed you the ball? You know what I'm saying? Made sure you got it because I know you was our best score. Yeah. You know, and that's and that's saying that's saying a lot because in certain situations and in certain at a certain point in that season. Sean was our best scorer. Yeah. Because could nobody in the country do nothing with him. Couldn't do nothing with Sean May. But he got to get his touches. Exactly. But he still For the is team. going to get his touches. Mm-hmm. The dude averaged, what's our second, what's our second leading scorer? Yeah. I think, uh, were you? No, I wasn't. I think no, Jawai Jawa, Jawa averaged more than me. So yeah. it was three people in front of me. It was him, Sean, and Jawad. Then it was me. I only averaged like 12 and a half. Mm. 
And um, but you average the most minutes in NCAA. Oh in yeah, the yeah, country. yeah. I play like hey, coach. I play like all the minutes. Hey, yeah. Oh no, man, it never take me out. Hey, listen, coach, he's like, I know you leaving after this year, so I'm gonna get everything I got. Yeah, out yeah of he you. got everything. I hey, listen, too. he was not playing. But yeah, man, I ain't gonna keep talking about old dude, man. I, you know, at the end of the day, man, I, I, I wish him all the best. I wish him all health and all of that. But bro, just leave, leave us out of your mouth. Yes, man. bro. Just leave us out of your mouth. You know, I ain't got no problem with you. I don't know why you got a problem with me or any of your other teammates that play with you. But, you know, we we wish you no harm and wish you nothing but the best. Man. Yeah. But That's crazy. I, it, it makes no sense to me because, <laughs> like I said, I met every single one of y'all. Y'all tight-knit group. Like we said it before, y'all have talked to this day. To this day. I just talked to Dino, Dino Well, like, what, a few days ago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Jawad not too long ago. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just it's man. a tough it's a tough situation. It, it is what it is. It is. Like that. It, 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 at that point, at that point, it is what it is. So let's talk about that that championship season. Mm. Y'all put together a run. Yes, y'all sir. were nice. I mean, the ACC was loaded, <laughs> and y'all went through that thing like it was nothing. What was your record against Duke? You got a win record against Duke? I think so. I think we. I've lost to him. I lost to him twice. I lost to him y'all twice. Won the AC- y'all won the- We won the ACC my junior year. Your junior year? We won it my junior year. You didn't win the tournament, though. Didn't win the tournament. Never won the tournament. I've never won the tournament. We've always lost. We lost to Georgia Tech that year, and Georgia Tech was stacked. Stacked. Jay Jack. Yeah. William- Will Bynum. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then they, uh, <laughs> BJ Elder. Uh, Talk about who-, who else was in the ACC at this point? Who? Shoot. Was Chris? No. Chris Paul. Chris was there. Chris Paul and all of them. Eric Williams, Justin Gray. Yes. All of them. Then you had over there at NC State, you had Julius Hodge. Yes. You know, and that crew. Because um, Maryland was nice. Maryland. Maryland when, was... I, when I first came in, they still had Steve Blake. When I my freshman year. <laughs> you know, then, then John Gilchrist ended up being the point guard after that. Um man, uh what else? Duke had uh Chris Du was it Duhan? Chris Duhan and Dane Ewing, Dane Ewing Sean yeah, yeah. Dockery and all them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sheldon Williams. Shel- um, JJ Reddick. <laughs> JJ Reddick <laughs> and all them. Sheldon dog. Williams. So, you know, it was it was tough, bro. It was tough. It was tough. It was tough. <laughs> what y'all go? Y'all went 30 something two? No. How many 30, games y'all lose that year? 30. We was three, lost three games. I was three games. Four games. 33 and four. Who y'all lose to? We lost to uh Georgia Tech. Santa Clara, first game of the season, I got suspended. Um, Duke. Who else we lost to that year? Probably a random ACC team. Oh, Wake Forest. Wake Forest but beat us random. at Wake Forest, and we beat them at, at, at home. Hey, Wake used to be rocking. Yes, uh, boy, it was tough playing out it there. Was boy. Tough playing it was tough playing there. out there. Boy, they had the uh, tie-dye shirts. Oh, it, it used to be jumping in there. It was tough playing out there. It was fun, though. Yeah, for it's sure. Fun. Hey, listen, so I, we got to talk about that championship game. Yeah. Against yeah. Illinois. Hey, listen, you talk about two heavyweight, like a heavyweight fight. <laughs> Dog <laughs> gone. Darren Williams. Yes, sir. D, what is D, D, D Brown? D Brown. And, D Brown uh, had that head back. He was nice. And Luther Head. And, Lu- <laughs> and Luther Head. Them three guards right there, them three guards right there was. I hey, mean, you had to buckle your chin strap that I game. Mean, woof. No, they going you to, too. You had to they get going. some sleep. They going like this. And they shooting threes. They setting picks. Y'all ran, y'all ran the table until then. Yeah. Like, y'all beat the hell out of everybody. Well, no. No. Was you know, it Nova? Yes. That's no, what gave Nova that game was a harder game than, than, than um, Illinois. Yeah. Nova almost got y'all. Man, Nova, I fouled out. And Melvin Scott stepped up. He stepped up, hit four big free throws at the end. That's big time. Fouled out. I fouled out that game. I'm talking about Kyle Lowry, Randy yeah. Foy, um, Curtis, Curtis Sumter, Jason Frazier. Man, them boys was loaded. And they started that four. And on um, Allen Ray. Uh-huh. So you're talking about five dudes who played in the pros at some point. Mm-hmm. And they started that same lineup. They played Randy Foy at the four. Oh, my God. So Jawah had a the first time Jawah had a guard, a guard. Guard, like, guard. And he yeah. could score. Mm-hmm. He came out, bro. He had like four threes in a row. They jumped out on us. It was crazy. Villanova gave us a problem. <laughs> they gave us a problem. But we we survived that. Yeah. We survived that. Y'all had you know, that man too. We played against Wisconsin. Yeah. 
Y'all had that man down low. Yeah, they couldn't do nothing with him, man. Sean was the most dominant big in, in, in NCAA, hands down. Yo, I, I, <laughs> I say this to this day. And people, like I said, as time goes on and people tend to forget, Sean May was a fucking issue. Man, listen. And what's crazy is that he can shoot. Yes. He can shoot the three. He got a clip. But he never shot. He's like, I don't need to. He never had I'm to. Get to that block. He never had to. His hands as a point guard, bro, I just go to the basket and throw all kind of passes. Mm -hmm. and he still would catch it. He had the best hands ever. Yeah. It was crazy, man. It was crazy. And Marvin came off the bench. And Marv came up. Listen, listen. The number two pick. The number two pick <laughs> on the 2005 National Championship team came off the bench. Off the bench, bro. And what people don't understand. Rightfully so, because Jawab Williams is a issue. A bucket. A bucket. A bucket. <laughs> uh, seriously, a bucket. Won a lot of games for us because Jawab can shoot that three. Shoot the pill. He can shoot that three. And you can't double, you can't double big fella you down there. You can't double nobody, really. That, and that's what the beauty of our team was. You couldn't double. You, you, you tried to double off Jackie, but Jackie was playing at such a high level, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That he worked on his jump shot, mm -hmm. that his shot was better. But Jackie was going to go, you couldn't take him off the court because he was going to lock up whoever you had on your team. I'm talking Appreciate about menace. Every time. J.J. Reddick got to say right now, to this day, J that Jackie Manuel was probably one of the best defenders that he's ever he played. He gave him with. hell. To this day. He gave him hell the whole, every single time, every, every game. Every time. Every game. It, it was crazy, bro. Like, I remember that game to this day. I'm like, Sean gave those big fellas from Illinois. He, he damn near fouled out the whole – the whole, whole team. Yeah. He, de he definitely found out two of them. He, two of them were gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that man gave out. Sheldon Williams 20 and 20 every game. Our junior. Every time we saw Duke, he had 20-something and 20 rebounds against Sheldon Williams. Every time. I'm talking about demolish this man. He was the best big in the country. Best Hands big down. in the country. I don't care what nobody say. They can say Andrew Bogan all they want to. <laughs> Andrew Bogan ain't want that smoke. Hey, listen. He ain't he want that smoke. He's the best big in the country. I don't care what nobody say. My Damn. mom was a Damn. bona fide fan out there. She said, Sean made my favorite player. Can't do nothing with him, He, he huh? went to work. He went to work, Every man. time he got the ball. And I was giving it to him. Yeah, every time. Hey, listen. I take don't it. care if I score. Take man. it. I'm going to have 20 assists. Yeah, you can. Here you go. I'm going to get this ball to you, buddy. What? Hey, I remember y'all wore 10s. What, did it start in the... Jordan 10. Did that start in the tournament? Uh, AC tournament? I think so. I think so. Them like my favorite shoes, man. Them like my favorites. I got, my, my, dad, my dad got those shoes to this day. He got them same shoes, the ones we wanted in and everything. He got them shoes still Listen, to this day. Those have slept on. Tens have slept on. I don't know why. I don't know why, because you know we get we get so we get all the numbers. And yeah. they, I ain't gonna lie to you, they fire. Yeah. They fire. But them right there. No special right I'm personally 11's guy. Everybody know that shit. Yeah. But, <laughs> hey, listen. I was hooped in 10's in high school. Them shit's comfortable as hell. They comfortable as hell. Well, you win a national championship. Mm -hmm. No, y'all lit. <laughs> no, y'all lit. Because, I, hey, we sure was. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we sir. sure was. Yes, sir. We was in but, St. Louis. Oh. Oh, y'all was in St. Louis. We was in St. Louis, <laughs> you man. Go. Yep. Were you, did you come to uh, Houston? Yeah. Sick. Yeah. I'm sick. Yeah. Cause we was about to be out. Yeah. <laughs> about to be out. That I was there because I was here in Dallas. Yeah. I was, I was in Dallas, sick. so we came up. Yeah. Boy, I thought we won that month. That was if we went to OT, it was a curtain call. But hey, listen, I got me one. We yeah. good. Yes, sir. But shout out to Prize Picks, our presenting partner, the Daily Fantasy Sports Game. At Prize Picks, you don't play against anybody. You only play against the stat projections. And it's very easy to play. It only takes less than 60 seconds to make my picks and submit my entries. AJ just told you how easy it is. All you have to do is pick between two to six players and pick more than or less than. Prize Picks has something for everybody, from the NBA to the NHL to even college basketball. My dog Rob Dillingham got me cashing out. For quick and easy deposits straight into your account, Prize Picks offers Apple Pay. With as little as four correct entries, you can make up to 100 times your money. So you can turn $10 into $1,000. You can turn $20 into $2,000. All right, download the app today. Use code RACE for your first deposit match up to $100. You get back to the campus. 
Uh-huh. Is there even a conversation with Coach Williams at this point? It still was. Really? But he knew. You thought about it? What's crazy is, <laughs> let me tell you this dude, <laughs> freaking Sean, Sean's stupid, man. <laughs> so, you know, we, you know, when you come back, we had a big old pep rally. Yeah. And it was inside the uh, Dean Dome. Dean Dome, yep. So everybody in there, we get on the stage, and Sean, you know, everybody said their words. Everybody got on the mic, said something. Sean going to get the mic and said, I'm coming back next year. Hey, Raymond, you coming back with me? <laughs> uh, nah. I looked at him like this, like. <laughs> so I'm like, so I looked at him, and I was next to get on the mic. I was the last one to get the mic. Yeah. And this dude going to tell me, are you coming back with me next year? Told the people he was coming back for his senior year. Yeah. So, you know, of course, I followed behind him and said, well, let's run it back then. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm out of here. Out of here, man. We met with Coach Williams. You know, Marv met with him. I met with him. Sean met with him. And we all did our press conference together. And, we, and, that, and, and then that shows you, which call it, he, he did his by himself. So that just shows you That's what type right. of person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know exactly. what I'm saying? But anyway. Yeah. We did our press conference by ourselves. <laughs> that's I mean, some bullshit. We did our press, yeah, that's you know what I'm saying. A, we crazy. we did our press conference together. Me, Sean, and Marvin. We did it and said that you know we 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 announced that we do declare for the draft or whatever. So you know, Coach Williams knew. He was like, "Man, there's nothing else that y'all can really do mm-hmm. in college basketball that you need to accomplish. Mm-hmm. You know, if y'all want to come back, hey, hey, listen, we we love to have you back, run it back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But for y'all guys, all of y'all lottery picks. Mm-hmm. You know, all y'all gonna go lottery. So. Just go ahead. And, you had to go do what you had yeah, to do. Go ahead and go ahead and go, man. Change, change your life, change your family lives. And, you For know, sure. go ahead and do what you gotta do. And that's one thing about Coach Williams. He he gonna keep it real with you. Hundred percent. You know, he's gonna keep it real with you. So that was that was that was a special moment, you know what I'm saying? Just with all of us doing it together and just knowing that, man, dang, I'm finna finna really go to the draft. Like yeah. I'm finna really accomplish a, a a lifetime childhood dream. On top, you too. You know what I'm saying? Like just, yeah, on top of being the champions. Mm-hmm. Then I got drafted to Charlotte. Yeah. Right up the street, still in the Carolinas. Yes. Hey, so you know, that you, was you you in good shape. Oh man, that what was, was that love. process like for you though? Man, it was love, man. You know, just with, you know, off the court endorsement stuff and just the love I got in Charlotte because of all the Carolina fans. And, mm-hmm being that close and just being a Carolina kid, period. You know, it was wonderful, man. It was wonderful, man. I, How many I was, uh, draft workouts you do? Uh, I think I worked out for the top s- 10 teams. Some of them I did together. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was it. Charlotte was out. your best one? Charlotte was one of my best ones, for sure. I, I do remember that, because it was me and um, me and D. Will worked out together. Mm-hmm. That was the first time I ever got to catch him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because they had him and CP, like a lot of people had him before me. Mm-hmm. So I really wanted both of them. I mm-hmm. wanted to work out against them. Yeah. So I, I had D. Will in Utah. That's when I knew Utah was picking him. Mm-hmm. Me and him was in Utah together. My agent called me and said, you know, Dan Williams is there as well. You know, just, you know, go take care of your business. Cool. Went to sleep early that night. Ready. Woke up the next morning. Got them, they picked us up from the hotel. I think me and Lou Williams end up being the two guards that end up working out against each other. Dan Williams worked out by himself earlier that day. Earlier that morning before we got there, he had his own private workout by himself. So I told my agent, I said, man, I ain't even work out against him. It was just me and Lou Williams and a, and a couple big dudes. I said, so they gonna pick him. They knew. Yeah. yeah. I said, they gonna pick him. And that's exactly what happened in the draft. Mm-hmm. They picked him at, at, at three. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what happened. New Orleans, I never worked out for. Uh-huh. So when they picked CP, so I was like, okay. But when Charlotte came up, you know, and I still was iffy about it. I just didn't know because um, Toronto wanted me real bad at seven. Mm-hmm. And the Knicks wanted me real bad at eight. So I was thinking I was going to get pushed, pushed down a little further. But, you know, my agent called me and said, Charlotte's about to take you. Mm-hmm. They just took two point guards back to back. I'm like, man, they're not about to take another point guard right now. Yeah. So it ended up being three of us going back to back to back. That's you tough. know what I'm saying? So That's Charlotte tough. ended up drafting me at, at five. So, you know, I was happy. I was extremely happy. And then Sean got picked at 14 by them as well, 13. Mm-hmm. He got picked by them to come down there too. So I was like, cool. Got my big fella with me. Got the big you know? fella with me. Hey, I listen, said, y'all, man, we're about to go ahead and take over at this point. <laughs> to go ahead and do what we got to do, man. But, yeah, nah, That's, That's crazy, bro. Like, where you, you was clearly at the draft. Mm-hmm. Think, talk about that moment for you, for you and your family. Man, it was, your whole life. 
man, it was just, it was over, it was, it was somewhat overwhelming because, you know, I wasn't used to all of that. Just, you know, people calling your phone, people, yeah. you know, wanting you to do this, do that. I had so many people that wanted to come to the draft. And I had a lot of people there, I had a lot of my family up there, up there in New York for the draft and stuff. A lot of my boys came. So, you know, we we did a, and what's crazy is I got, my birthday was the day before the draft. Mm -hmm. Like I just turned 21. Damn. Well, I was still 20. I, I had so just boy. turned 21. And we had a party at um, I think Jay Z had a had a restaurant at the time there mm -hmm. called Justin's or Forty Four. I don't know what it was called. Whatever it was, it was at his um his restaurant, and I had a big party there. And then the draft was the next night, and I think I just we was walking. Me and my boys, we were just walking. We was in Manhattan. It was in Times Square, and I was just looking up in the air, looking at the lights, and I was like, I'm really here. Like. Yeah. You know, just just a, a, a so real moment. Like, dang, like I'm about to get drafted tomorrow and change my life, change my family life. So it was just like one of those moments where, man, this is this is a it's a blessing from mm -hmm. God, and just you know, all this hard work finally paid off. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I look forward for the next day. You know, got my suit on. People came in, uh, helped me get dressed. Um, I don't know if you had a, heard of the the, the group LAV. There was like a group that had like a lot of girls, a lot of pretty girls. Mm. So that's how they get you. Mm -hmm. Bring the pretty girls in. Oh, let me get you a suit. And yeah, yeah. Say, you know, you don't bought 20 suits. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> next day, you know, you don't bought 20 suits for yeah. these girls. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But whatever. You know, they came in, they helped me get dressed and, you know, you know, got me, got me up to par or whatever. And um, we was going down the escalator to get on the bus to drive over to the drive. And I'm nervous. I'm just nervous, man. I cut my phone off. I had about a million calls that day. Just people calling me, where are you going? What's what's going on? Like, man, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm waiting I'm to see where I'm like going. Just yeah, like y'all. I'm just happy I'm here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, it was just, it was just a lot, man. But it was wonderful. Probably mm -hmm. one of the best moments of my life, man, to this day. Because, you know, you just don't realize how fast that stuff goes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you... One moment you dare, next moment you 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 at home retired, not yep. playing no yep. basketball no more. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? So that's crazy. how quick that's why quick time goes, man. For sure. It was, for sure. It was it was special though. For sure. You get to the NBA. Mm -hmm. You play for the Charlotte Bobcats. For you youngins out there, it's the Charlotte Hornets. <laughs> but you're for the you're playing for the Charlotte Bobcats. You back at home, mm -hmm. right down the street from home home. Mm -hmm. And you right down the street from your second home. Talk about how challenging that is also. Just being so close to, like I said, we love our family. We love <laughs> to death, but they always want to come. To, they always want to come to the game. They always, you're at the crib. Nah, I ain't here, bruh. Like, the good, the best thing I have about it, my mom and daddy took care of that for me. Mm -hmm. You know, with me still being so young. Yep. They kind of handled all that with people calling for tickets. You know, y'all call us, don't call him, don't bother him. Mm -hmm. They kind of took care of that for me. Uh, I think my first game or or at some point, one of the home games, I had like a, a bus load of people come from back home where I was from. We got bus loads and I bought, I mean, I don't know how many tickets it was. It was something crazy. Like almost <laughs> three, 400 tickets Damn. that I got for people, you know what I'm saying, just to come and get an opportunity to actually see me play in the pros. Yeah. And then I never did it again. Mm -hmm. That was it. I got you got it. your one shot. That, was that one opportunity. You <laughs> that was it. You know, and I had people come. I had friends. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, throughout the year, throughout the, because I was there for five years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had people come in and, you know, do all of that. But as far as that big type of tickets, mm -hmm. it was a yeah. one-time deal. For sure. <laughs> I, I, I like that you said that. So, everybody, this is a great way to go about it. I did the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. College, don't call me. Oh, no. Don't call me about tickets. No, sir. I don't want to hear it. I don't know. Call my dad, call my mom. Yep. If it's somebody I don't know, ask me first because maybe I might have somebody I want to go yeah. and you doing it. But like, I, di I didn't deal with it. Like it was something that I was like, listen, I'm focused on the game. I don't got time to be worried about the tickets. Blah, blah, blah. I remember, bro, the coach when he used to come to me like, Theo, who is this? I'd be like, I don't know. Like, I don't know who the hell that is coming to the game. My dad doing the, doing the damn tickets. But I think that's a great way to go about it. Have your parents take care of all that other shit. So you can focus on the hoops. What was your welcome to NBA moment? <clears throat> gotta have that. I got a lot of those. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I got a lot of those. Man. I remember Shaq knocking me out there. 
God, you know, I'm being young, being a young kid, you know, got bounce. Yeah. You know, about to, about to try to dunk on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Went in the air, Shaq knocked me. I'm talking about knocked me flat on my back. <laughs> they didn't call a foul. Nothing. He stepped over me. Stepped over me. Boom. Boom. Welcome to the league, young fella. Hey, shout they out to Shaq. They didn't call a foul, bro. <laughs> You know how big this man is? That Doc, hurt. welcome to the league. That hurt. That was what I was one moment. I had another one. Andre Miller. Everybody, if you yeah. if you a real sports basketball fan, you know who Andre Miller was. Come on now. Andre Miller was one of the most underrated point guards that ever played this game. That man was a bucket and a problem. Mm -hmm. Man, man, put me in the post, man, did whatever he wanted to do with me, man. Mm -hmm. I was so mad. That man was strong. That man could score that ball. He, he was crafty. Him and Sam Cassell, another person I was about to speak on. Really? Sam Cassell scored 15 straight on me, bro, and was talking to me while he was doing it. How yeah. disrespectful was that? Yeah. He was talking to me. Hey, young fella. Hey, 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 young fella, don't worry about it. Can you can't do nothing about it? Pump hey, oh, made me jump in the air. Boom, oh, uh, and one. Boom. Talking to me as he's scoring, telling me what he's about to do, talking to me, giving me advice. This man was giving me buckets. And helping me at the same time. This all, hey, listen, hey, man, it's listen. all making sense. Say, okay, <laughs> let me go ahead and let the viewers know. It all is, it's all making sense now. Ray having PTSD when he came back to Carolina. <laughs> That's why you was doing shit you did to us. Because that was happening to you. Man, listen. Bro, that's bro. Talking to you? Talking to me, bro. I'm talking about talking to me as he giving me buckets. This is the fourth quarter, game on the line, and I couldn't do nothing with him. Hmm. And I played against Steve Nash. I played against Allen Iverson, which is a ball. That was an experience. I was like, I, <laughs> that was an experience. That was a guy like that was like an idol to yeah. me. So I'm like, oh, I'm about to play against AI. Yeah. Man, and he was on his way out. He yeah. still was a blur. You still picking up full at this point? Yes. <laughs> yes. And this man's still a blur. Like, I don't play against him. I played against Jason Kidd. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I played against. I mean, whoever you can think about, T.J. Ford. I mean, I played against, um, you know, obviously the guys that that came in with me, with D. Me. Will, Chris Paul. But I'm talking about just 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 the old heads, and those two dudes is by far the two dudes that like really like welcomed me to the league. Yeah, I like mean Andre Miller and Sam Cassell. Like, somebody giving you buckets like that and then talking to you at the same time. <sighs> that's it's a it's a very demoralizing feeling, especially when you you sitting in that moment. Jamal Murray's one of those for me because <laughs> he caught it at the right elbow and there was nothing I could do. Three straight possessions. And I said, what a, what's going on right now? <laughs> like, how am I giving no resistance whatsoever? But, hey, listen, <laughs> it happens to everybody. It happens to the best of us. It does. But, it damn, does. bro. Yeah, man. And some you, dogs. You, dogs. Hey, listen. Jamal Crawford. You plan to get some point guard. Point gods. Yes. Greats. Greats. Rates. And the thing is, at that at that age, it's not a, at that time of the game. It's not about how fast, how explosive. Mm -hmm. You playing a day pace. Mm -hmm. That's the most. That's the most frustrating part. You can't You're not speed speeding them up. Them up. Can't speed them up. No, that's what I'm saying. You asked me, was I picking up full court? Yes. And they still didn't. That was unbothered. Mm -hmm. They was just going you down just the court, your hip. taking their yep. time. Yep. I'm like, Phew. orchestrate, bro. Ray used to do this shit. <laughs> Ray used to do this shit when he came back. <laughs> He do this high dribble. Uh -huh. He talking to his teammate, yo, go over there. When I set the screen, you just cut. You just cut. And I'm like, what the? <laughs> Next I, thing you know, bucket. I'm like, this shit is unbelievable, <laughs> bro. Unbelievable. <laughs> hey, hey, it's just, a, it, it got passed down. It happened to you. You passed it down to us. Yeah. Now I'm out here trying to do the same shit. Don't look the same, but I'm out here trying to do the same shit. But damn. When was the first game that you realized I can do this shit at a high level. We played against uh, Sacramento. Sac and um, Sac Mike Bibby. Mike Bibby. Oh, shit. <laughs> Never mind. Mike Bibby, they point guard. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and like, I had my best game. I, had to, like, I think I had like 20 some points, but I was still coming off the bench because my first 20 games, I, I started, I didn't start. I came behind, the, I came behind Brevin Knight. Mm -hmm. And then we end up starting and playing together towards after those 20 games, you know, Bernie, Coach Bernie on um, Bickerstaffs decided to start me and Brevin together at the one-two. Mm -hmm. So 
that just just one of those games where I just I just I I, I figured it out. Mm-hmm. And I, I understood how fast and how this game was going and just how to maneuver in this yep. game and figure it out. So I finally figured it out and I kinda went from I kinda went from there. And then later on that season I had a game versus Cleveland and I had like 30, 35 or something like that. And I remember um Damon Jones, when I tore his behind up. <laughs> tore his behind up. LeBron mama came up to me after the game and hugged me because you know, me and LeBron have known each other since high school through AAU. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we've known each other. I've known his mama. And she came up to me and said, boy, it's good to see you out here doing your thing. Yeah. I said, I'm trying, mama. Yeah. <laughs> but we still end up losing in double yeah. overtime. Yeah. But boy, I told Damon Jones, up. <laughs> I told his behind, up. I was going at him, bro. I was going at him. So, you know, at that point, I'm figuring this thing out now. Mm-hmm. I'm figuring out how, how to play in this league, how to, you know, how to get buckets and, you know, stuff mm-hmm. like that. But, you know, I still had to figure things out, man. As you know, it's challenging the league from team to team. Mm-hmm. You may play one way with this team, but then you go to this team, you got to play a whole nother way. Go ahead, it's go, a whole nother system. Go ahead and tell them what you did. Five with uh, Charlotte. Five in Charlotte. Then I did two, well, two in New York, but two and a half in New York. So I did a half a season. My first year, my first go around, got traded to Denver for Melo. Mm-hmm. That Melo trade, Melo, Chauncey Billups, and the couple of other people, and about four or five of us went to um, Denver for a half a season. I played a half a year. Me and Ty played together. Mm-hmm. And then I left there and went to Portland for one year. After that year, went to back to New York for two. Mm-hmm. After that, came to Dallas for two. for two. Clippers, after that, for one. OKC for two. For the last and then that was, that, was, that was the end of, the, end of my career right there. So, you know, I played for different coaches. I played for different cultures, different systems. And, mm-hmm. you know, you have to really find your niche and find out how can I get minutes? How can I be successful mm-hmm. in, this, in this system? Yeah. And I came to Dallas, man. They had about five point guards. But I got hurt. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that kind of put me in the back burner. A lot of people don't know this. My ninth season... You know, I'm still a starter in the league. I'm still like a starting point guard. I'm not mm-hmm. no backup at this point. Not yeah. in my head. Yeah. I'm not no backup. So um I got hurt. I messed my ankle up, man. Like it was like a weird, a weird ankle sprain like they had never seen before. High ankle sprain. Like I literally was in a boot and my foot was turned on the side on this way on, out like this. And I had to work my foot back in and learn how to really walk and run again. Mm-hmm. Like it was crazy. So I was off about three, four months. Came back. They had them brought J.J. Burrell in. Jameer Nelson was already there. Mm-hmm. Devin Harris was already there. Um, Monte Ellis was already there. Shit. Um, Chandler Parsons. Yeah. Uh, who else? It was somebody. It was one more other guard. So they was guard heavy. Mm-hmm. So I come back off this injury, and they ain't got no minutes on me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what the? So I'm talking about, at this point, from a starter, having like some of the best numbers, best time of, Best my career coming out of New York and just different little places. And man, we DMPs, 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 not hooping. Man, you fuming. I'm not really, it's not about a fuming. I'm just going crazy. Like, what, what is going on? Like, 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 what's what is this? And just who I am and my and my mentality just really got me out of that. You know what I'm saying? Like I just worked. I worked. I kept getting healthy with my ankle because I was still dealing with it even when I came back. Worked, I worked that summer, I worked hard, man. I didn't even, I don't think I even went home that whole summer. I stayed in Dallas that whole summer. And then and my family wanted to see me, I flew them here. You know, saying, y'all come see me here, I ain't going nowhere, I'm, I'm locked in. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, I had my trainer come out, he came and spent like two months with me, and we just worked. Yeah, we we worked. Just worked. And then I came back the next year and started, you know what I'm saying, we had a, I had a good year with Dallas, and we played um, OKC in the playoffs. And uh, I had a big game against them, like 20, 26, 11, and, 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 and 8, something like that. I almost had a triple-double versus um, OKC. And that's when KD was still there, Russ, and, mm-hmm. and all of them. And um, we won that game in OKC. It was the second game we played there. We was 1-1 one one coming back to Dallas. And then they just tore our behind up from there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> you know, I still average like almost 18 a game, 18, 19 for that series. Mm. So, you know, I'm like, ooh, man, I'm finna come back to Dallas. You know, I just let you know how things work sometimes, man. It's just, yeah. you know, some things, sometimes things just don't go in your favor. But I still, well, I, 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 
telling that story to say for these young boys that sometimes, man, they ain't going to be perfect, man. Nope. It ain't going to be perfect, but you have to stay professional. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that it's a business. Mm -hmm. This game goes the way it goes sometimes, mm -hmm. and sometimes it don't go in your favor. Yeah. But you still have to be professional and show them that you can be an asset to a team because that's how you get those extra years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how you get to play over 10 plus and 12 and mm -hmm. 13, 14, and sometimes 18, 20. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you you have to stay professional and uh, and you can't let you can't let your ego get in the way. Yeah. You let your ego get in the way. That's where your first mistake comes in. 100%. And all of a sudden you looking like, well, damn, man, nobody wants to sign me. Nobody wants to this. And I hate it because you look at a guy like Demarcus Cousins. Mm -hmm. The professionalism part. Yeah. If he would have stayed professional, did what he had to do, and I get it. You know, you all star, you you got this ego, you making a hundred million. Like I'm, I'm one of the best bigs in this league. Yeah. You're right. But guess what? You you did some stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, some things happened off the court. Some things happened on the court that got you in this predicament of of why they got this stigma on. Yeah. So and the biggest thing is these people they putting so much money into it. They like do I even want to deal with that? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? That's the biggest thing. It's mm -hmm. like. Do I even want to deal with it? And at the end of the day, no. They know. Think about how many dudes you see out there that you know that can play in this league right now. 100%. You know what I'm saying? And it's just because of the things that they've done mm -hmm. and uh, their character mm -hmm. has hurt them. Mm -hmm. And they want to try to, you trying to straighten up now, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of too late. And you, you, you can, you're 14 years, you can tell me if I'm wrong. When the league puts a label on you, <laughs> When they put that label on you, how hard is that thing? How hard is that motherfucker to get off? Listen, man, I had one year I came in out of shape. Mm -hmm. One year I came in one year out of shape in Portland, and that was on a lockout year. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't know when our season was gonna start. We didn't know nothing. So you know, I was just chilling. I'm at the crib, not really working out like that. They was like, then we ain't close to no deal. We ain't gonna do none of this. Like we ain't we. We ain't close to nothing. Like we may not even have a season this year. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dang, all right. You know, dudes was going overseas, the the play and making money. I think D Will went over somewhere for like they gave him like five hundred thousand to come play like ten games. Yeah, something crazy like that. He went over there just to stay in shape. Mm -hmm. Like people just like didn't know what was going to happen. So I came into Portland. Yeah, I was a little out of shape. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying whatever. That stuck with me the rest of my time. Yeah, I would come in in shape. Like, you know, obviously my body is going to change. I'm older. I'm in my 30s now. Mm -hmm. So I'm not 20 years old no more. So, you know, my body is going to change. But I'm in shape. I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. And it was always something every year. It was always something when my agent was going to talk to teams. Well, is he in shape? And, you know, this and that. And it's like, damn, that shit happened <laughs> one year. And it's like, I'm out of shape every year now? Yeah, crazy. And it's like, you know, so I know when, when something when they put that stigma on you and that sticks and they tell all these, because it's a fraternity, bro. Mm -hmm. They going to call every team and tell them, Raymond Felton's out of shape, man. Oh, my God, he came in like this. It you know, trickles to every team. Mm -hmm. So now that's the first thing they're asking. Right. Hey, well, is he in shape? Yeah. And it's like, what the hell? Yeah. Come on, bro. So, you, you know, saw me play last year. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean so it just, that yeah. just that's, that's how it goes. It yeah. follows you just like that. For sure. It follows you. For sure. How was the, what was the biggest hurdle or because I know how you are. You want to win. Yeah. Yeah. You want to win in Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> you was not winning in Charlotte. How did you adjust to that? It was tough. It was tough, man. My first four years, man, we was getting our behinds kicked. I mean, y'all, it was, I mean, it, it was, was bad. Yeah, it was bad. We won like, one year, we only won 18 games. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So out of 82, so let, let, let that tell you. Yeah. Let that tell you how bad it was. You know, we was, I was planning my vacation like uh, after All-Star Weekend. Yeah. Like I knew we had no chance. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I knew where I was going after the last game of the season. I'm getting my exit. I'm going to go and have my exit meeting the next day. I'm, I'm out. I'm yeah. going somewhere to go have some fun. Mm -hmm. But um, Coach Larry Brown came in and changed the culture. Yeah. My fifth season, he was our coach and you know, the trades the that they made. Yeah, we made the playoffs here. You know, we got swept. We yeah. got swept by a good Orlando team who made it to the um the finals. The finals that year. that year. Made it to the finals that year. Um, but we had uh me, Steven Jackson, uh Gerald Wallace, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It was an all star that year. Um, Tyson Chandler, um, Mecca Okafor. Uh, we were solid. Yeah, Theo, Theo being Theo Theo Ratliff, uh Boris Diaw, 
like DJ Augustine, mm-hmm. you know, was um, the other point guard that we had on that team. Um, Tyrus Thomas, mm-hmm. like, look, we was we was solid, man. And we had a, you know, we had a great coaching staff. And then Coach 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 Brown was another one of those coaches who was like Coach Williams. Yes, <laughs> like I had a one game, man. We went into overtime, man. Went into double overtime with with the Lakers. And that's what Lakers was like, the Lakers. Yeah, and we beat them like double overtime. I almost had a triple double. <laughs> And this man told me in the locker room, like, like, son, you still don't know how to play the point yet. Damn. And I'm like, we just won. <laughs> I almost had a triple-double, and I have hit some big buckets. Yeah. Like, made some big plays in this game for us to win this game. And this man told me I don't know how to play. Man, that thing yeah. bothered me the whole night. I couldn't sleep. Yeah. So I was, first thing the next morning, I'm knocking on his door. Hey, man, hey, coach, can I talk to you? Yeah. And he was like, yeah, come on in, son. What you need? I said, coach. What you mean last night? But I don't know how to play the point. That I still don't know what you. He's like, ah, oh, son. I. He said, don't, 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 don't listen to me. He said, I'm just trying to get the best out of you. That's just me, just talking shit. And I'm like, man, are you serious? Man, I lost, <laughs> I've been thinking about this shit all, this all sleep. night. <laughs> I lost all this sleep all night, man. And that's all you hey, gonna yeah. give me? And I just kind of just looked at him, and I just walked out of his office, man, and went on back downstairs yeah, to, get, like, to get ready for practice. What are you talking about? Yeah, man. But you know, that's just the type of stuff that you know that. That and then and, and that's still my guy. That's mm-hmm. my guy right there, L- sure. LB. But um, that's the type of stuff that you know you deal with, man, in the league, man. It's a, uh, it's mental. Mm-hmm. You know, you're gonna deal with mental, mental stuff. Like you're gonna have to be strong. And if you're not, the league ain't for you. And oh. depending on where you playing, ain't for you. Cause ain't New York, let me tell you something. I love New York, and I got a lot of love in New York from from the fans and just period. There ain't a place that's easy to play. I'm gonna tell you right now. You gotta be a different. You gotta tick a little <laughs> hey, different. Man. Hey, if you gotta, ain't mentally strong, you go, you can't go play for the you Knicks. You can't play for the Knicks, buddy. <laughs> a lot of people are like I would love to play for the Knicks in Madison. No, 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 you wouldn't. No, 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 no. <laughs> you gotta be a. You gotta have a type of personality too. Yeah, you do. You gotta you have do. a type of personality to, to survive down there. I'm telling you. I've been. I was down there for three years. Like I said, did I play like no? But at the end of the day, you got to – I sat there and watched it. Julius Randle. Who? Dog. Dog. But you got to be a dog to play there. You got Jaylen to. Jalen Brunson. A dog. dog. You got to be a dog to play. They just got a bunch of dogs on that team that they just play hard. That's it. And that's why they're so successful. You know, let's just, just be honest. Villanova, Villanova breeds dogs. That's what they breed. That's what they breed. Josh Hart is a dog. Mm-hmm. DiVincenzo. Dog, a dog. Mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, and they yeah. and they playing at a high level, man. Yeah, they playing at a high level. I like it. I Second like time it. you went to New York, mm-hmm. your mm-hmm. team was Ray. We got to talk about it. It was Ooh. you, Ooh. Carmelo Anthony, J.R. Smith, Ooh. Iman Shumpert. Y'all had Tyson Chandler, Amari uh, Stoudemire, Amari Stoudemire, Steve Novak. Was nah. he? No, he wasn't on that team. Not that team. Uh, that, whoa! I feel like y'all had Steve, bro. Steve Novak was on that team. He was on that team that first year. You're right, Steve Novak. Did you? Were you on the team with Tim? Tim um, Hardaway Jr. Yep, that was my young fella. He was a rook. <sighs> yep. I know I'm missing somebody. Yeah, you yeah. missing a big one. Uh, Fuck no. Nah, he was. He came. In, he came out to me. You missing a big one? I said Melo. Who kept us together? Jason Kidd. Oh. My fault, J. Kidd. <laughs> Damn. You missing, a, you missing a big one, J. Kidd. And what's crazy, a lot of people don't know, she was on that team. Yes. Kurt Thomas. Kurt Thomas was with us all year. Marcus Camby. She retired that year with us. He was there for half a year. He, he got like a, a foot. Something happened with his foot, and he, he couldn't play. He ended up retiring, and that's when we got Kmart. Kmart came when she retired. So yeah, our coach was Woody. Yeah, Coach Wilson. <laughs> yep. Hey, yeah. listen, yep. couldn't have been a better coach for that. Yep. I'm telling you, but, bro. I'm telling you, dog. We had a squad. Squad. We had a squad. Training camp had to be ridiculous. We had a squad, bro. It was it was so fun because Woody was such a player's coach. Yes. Yes. So he listened to us about our bodies, but at the same time, he was a coach that didn't play. So we was gonna we was gonna work. We was mm-hmm. gonna hoop. But, bro. If we if if we was healthy, the Miami Heat did not want to see us that year. No we beat them four to one that year, uh-huh. three one. Yeah, we beat them three one that year. Uh-huh. They did not want to see us. 
But we lost that first game to Indiana in New York, and we could never get over that hump. They beat us every time at, at their place, and we beat them after that every time. So game six, they end up, they end up getting us in Indiana. If we would have beat them, game Miami one. did not want to see us in the Eastern Conference played Finals. Them. We'd have played Miami in the Eastern Conference Finals. Who'd y'all beat the first round? Um, Boston. We beat Boston four, four to two. Y'all was stacked, bro. We had that was the best team you say you played on? Yeah. Yeah. Just over, just with vets, uh, young talent, yeah. scoring, just, just dudes who just knew how to win. Yeah. That's, part of, that's the best season I had. 50 some wins. How many yeah. Hall of Famers we just name off? J Kid, Melo. Uh, well, them probably the only two. No, Ty- hey, listen. Ah, Tyson might get in there. Tyson might get in there. She should get in there. She should get in there. Amari. Yeah. She, Mari. Mm-hmm. That's there. Yeah. You talking about greats. Greats, bro. You talking about greats right there. Greats. And the you thing know is. The crazy thing is that happened to me that year, bro. The crazy thing is that gave me the super, the ultimate confidence is that we came in a training camp and Jay Kidd said, you the point guard. I'm playing the two. You running this team. It's your team. To hear that from a dude that I looked up to. 100%. The dude that's a Hall of Fame, like Hall of Famer, Hall of, one of the best point guards to ever play this game, to look me in my eyes and say, this is your team. Mm-hmm. We're going to go as you go. This is your squad. Yeah. I'm playing. I'm playing off the ball. This the ball is in your hand here. That's all you need, right there. Oh man, that's all you need. That man right used to tell me some stuff on the court, bro. That man was so smart, man. Unbelievable. He used to tell me in a play, "This is what you do," and I promise you, it's gonna open up. Mm-hmm. Like we was running a play one time, the pistol play. He told me, "All you gotta do is act like you're gonna give me the ball, but keep going." He said, I promise you, you're going to get a wide open layup. Mm-hmm. And I did exactly what he said, and it just, just opened up, <laughs> just like that. I get to the basket for a layup. I was like, man, this man is so crafty, so smart, man. No, he's elite. He's elite. I remember, uh, like I said, I had two two years with him. Mm-hmm. And the on the fly, people people give Coach Kidd a lot of flack. People who don't know basketball. <laughs> and... He's so advanced in just the on the court adjustments as far as like as you're playing, right? In the playoffs, there'll be something happening. We score on it one way. He knows before he's like, okay, we just scored that way. We know how we're gonna, I know how we're gonna adjust on the fly on how we're gonna score the next time. Just like how you just said. And it's it's such it's so at it's at an elite level that people just not everybody gets it, though. That's the hardest part. Because when you have that quarter, and that's why him and Luca work so well, because Luca, he don't really got to tell him much. Because you can't really throw a lot at Luca that mm. Luca ain't seen. Mm-hmm. So that's what makes him special. But J. Kidd, one of the smartest people I've ever been around, play as far as on the court. Hands down. Shit is crazy. Hands down. You was on the Clipper team, though. Yeah. It was nice. Whew. It was you, CP, mm-hmm. Blake. DJ, mm-hmm. uh, Jamal, Jamal, mm-hmm. JJ, JJ was Paul in it, huh? Paul, Paul Pierce. Pierce, Paul Pierce, uh huh, JJ Reddick, Austin Rivers, um, Wesley Johnson. Y'all not that I beat um, that Knicks Mo team. Spates. Beat that Knicks team? Yeah. I don't know, bro. It was I don't know. That's tough. That's tough. That's kind of equal. That's what I'm saying. You, got you said that was easy. Hey, listen. That's, because you got to think about it. You know, on both sides, you know, if you if you take me off the Clippers and put me with the Knicks, you know, me and, Ke- me, me and CP head to head. Yeah. Jason Kidd and JJ head to head. JR, if you want to bring JR off the bench or whatever, you know, JR came off the bench. So if you put him, just say we're going to put our best – Put Jr. in there. Yeah. Who ended the game? Melo at the four. Yeah. Tyson at the five. So now Blake Griffin got to deal gotta with Melo. You know, so you got to think about that. They got to go each Mello, other each way. Though. Exactly. Uh huh. Exactly. So you know, you got to think that's about that too. One. That's a tough one. So you know that that's kind of that's, that's a tough one. But then you got Jamal Crawford. Yeah, coming off the bench. So you know, 
But that could be him and but then him and Iman. Yeah. Iman gotta guard yeah. Jamal. There you go. But listen, but Jamal, he put hey, listen, it don't matter who in front of him. So, you know, it's 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 kinda it's kinda one of those things where you look at it it's like, man, that could be it could be equal. You know what I'm saying? That could be that could be tough. Who'd y'all run into that year? The Clippers? Yeah. Um it war- no, it wasn't the Warriors. I uh, beat them that year. Utah. Utah. Because uh You know who killed us? You know who killed us? Joe Johnson. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> he wasn't supposed to be on the dance. Was, he, was Joe, he there the whole year? Yes. Joe Johnson killed us, bro. Joe Johnson was a bucket. bucket. <laughs> like, He's a bucket. He was a bucket, man. I was like, man, come on. Dude, this dude, like, like basically, like, on at the end of his career, and this man was, like, he, he, he was the one who hurt us in that series. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, they had Donovan Mitchell. They had... Uh, Gordon Haywood, you know they had those. They had those guys. Joe Johnson hurt us. Yeah, that's who hurt us. You got a question? Mm-hmm. You was on that Clipper team, and y'all had that beef with the Warriors. Mm-hmm. It was always smoke. Mm-hmm. You saw that coming? That barrage of just winning. I mean, KD helped a lot, but yeah. Did I see the Warriors winning like that? Yeah, like the dynasty start starting. <laughs> well, once they changed. The whole, they changed how the whole league wanted to play the, play offense. Mm-hmm. They basically changed. They basically changed the game of basketball. You know, so if you think about it, when I first came in, it was legit fives where you had to throw the ball in the post, and these dudes were trying to get buckets like mm-hmm. Dwight Howard and them Shaq and them, yeah. like they was throwing the ball in the post to these dudes, and these mm-hmm. dudes going to work. Zebo, all of them. Yeah. But then if you fast forward a couple few years later, they come in. And the stuff they was doing, shooting the threes, and now they got big men shooting threes, and now the whole game changed. Mm-hmm. Now nobody wanted post up bigs. Mm-hmm. Now they want dudes to shoot threes. And you can't play in the drop no more. No, <sighs> no. Can't play in the drop. Yeah, no so more. they kind of changed the they. You know, you you got to put them in as a dynasty because they kind of changed the game. Yeah, you have to. I agree with that. <laughs> so you we your best chance of winning a championship out of your fourteen years, you would say that Knicks team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's the only team that I went the furthest in the playoffs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the only team that I got out of the first round. Mm-hmm. Everybody else, you know, we made the playoffs, but I didn't get out of that first round. Got you. I didn't get out of that first round. Hey, listen. Everybody would have loved to see that Knicks Miami <sighs> bump. Woo! That would have been special. It. I wanted that so bad. That would have been special. That. I wanted that so bad. Damn. But Melo was, Melo was hurt. Tyson was hurt. JR had a dealing with a back issue. We just went healthy. That's we went tough. healthy. That's tough. I mean, still. So you went Charlotte, Dallas. No, yeah. Charlotte. Charlotte, New York. Charlotte, New York, Portland. Denver. Portland. Yeah. Denver, Portland. Mm-hmm. Back to New York. Mm-hmm. Then OKC. Dallas. Dallas OKC. Dallas Clippers OKC. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. So you remember you was talking about it was calling you Unk, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> you remember you came to New York when you was a BK? We had like that little mini camp. Yeah. We had the mini camp. This is when you was Unk. Uh-huh. You wanna play, you played a couple games <laughs> and they said, Ray, you good. And Ray's like, all right, I'm good. <laughs> You just sit on the side. This is what I do. You was like, oh, he a vet vet now. He only got to play all these damn games. You was chilling. But you was a part of a special year, bro. P- talk about how special Westbrook, Westbrook is. Oh, my goodness. As God. a player, as a person, human being. Like, just talk about that man for a minute. That man by far one of the best teammates I've ever had. Easily. Like, just who he is as a person, who he is as a player, who he is, like, as a as a worker, like that man works hard. Mm. That man deserves everything he's got, everything he's gonna get in the future. Mm. He deserves it because he worked hard for it. Mm-hmm. Like, like just knowing his story, hearing his story, you know, talking to him, why you play with such a chip and why you keep it, because you're a person, you made it. You mm. good. MVP, mm. all this money still plays with that same chip because that's chip. who he is. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think a lot of people take that and for people to try to, to over, over the last couple of years to try to downplay who he is, man, y'all crazy as hell. Crazy. Who this, this man is a Hall of Famer first ballot, first ballot. easily, 
Don't go down as one of the best point guards. Mm -hmm. And just the things that he's done. He's never been a guy that's, that shoots the ball like Steph Curry. So if, when they was trying to make that a big deal, or uh, well, look how he's shooting the ball. He's never been a guy that shot the ball like that. But guess what he did? Mm -hmm. He won. He got to that cup. He got he to that cup and he won. Mm -hmm. He was a winner. When KD left, he still led that team to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. He was a winner, man. Y'all team stacked in. Yeah. Y'all have you. Oh, no, I ain't talking about before. I'm talking about before I came. Oh, yeah, I for came sure. The year after that. Oh, yeah, yeah. The year he won MVP, I wasn't there. That's when he he had, um, man, he was just him, Steven Adams, um, Serge Ibaka. Jeremy Grant. He had, was, it, um, was Jeremy there? Jeremy Grant wasn't even there yet. I don't think he was there yet. Yeah, he might not have been there yet. I don't think yet. he was there yet. Yeah. Um, it might have been, like, the year he won MVP. The year Russell won. I know he had Cantor. Sure. Cantor was there. I don't know. What's the whatever. what's the other one named the, the guard man? Oladipo. Yes, Vic. Oladipo was there, and that's before Vic really blew up to be who he was. Yep. Because he went, he ended up going to Indiana yeah. and blowing up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But Vic still was good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that that was his squad. And he man, that man was going crazy that year. Listen, <laughs> the people don't understand. I remember like, my like, shit, bro. I got rest tonight. Cause he plays so hard, bro. Man, that man used to do that in practice, bro. Same way. Man, man, that my first we was in training camp, man. That man coming out full speed at you. <laughs> just zoom. That man 6'4. And a lot of people don't know. This man is built. Yeah. Strong. He ain't no little dude. This man is a, like a specimen. Mm -hmm. This man built up, bro. Mm -hmm. So this man coming at you like that full speed and jump like he can jump and strong as he is and he quick. Changing directions, man. Listen, man. This shit don't man, make no was, sense. It was, it was like, man, if I could, if I could stay in front of this dude like this and get, I can play because I'm straight. Yeah. <laughs> I'm straight when we go play. And I'm and I'm playing and I'm coming off the bench, mm -hmm. like playing against the the, the other team's second guard. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's about to be over. Mm -hmm. So you know, what I'm saying like, man, that's that's the one team that I felt like we really underachieved. Yeah, like we could have, we could have, and should have did more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because we had a squad, bro. Y'all had some guys. We had a squad at OKC that year, man. You know what I'm saying? We had a team, man. Mello was there. Mello, Mello was there that first year with yeah. PG. Mello, PG. Mello, PG. We still y'all did. Y'all played us. together twice, two years, right? Who, was it two me years? Me and PG did. Yeah, me and PG and Russ. Yeah. But, um, Mello only played with us one. Mm -hmm. You knew Donovan was gonna be. Yeah, was Don there? Who Don beat? Don was the one who beat y'all in Utah, right? Yeah, he was on the team. That's what I told you. That's what Joe Johnson. Oh, yeah, Joe, yeah, yeah. I think Joe Johnson might have been gone because he hurt us the year before when I was with the Clippers. Yeah. And then we come back, we play them again. We play them every year. You might have. No. You ran in Utah. I ran in Utah three times in a row. Yeah. Three, three, three years back to back to back in the playoffs. And they beat us every time. It's hard to play in them, bro. Man, listen. They be the rocking. last year, bro, the last year we played them, Paul George pump faked Rudy Gobert. And this man jumped, like, high as he can jump. Mm -hmm. Paul waited for him to come down, bumped him, boom, threw the ball up. They didn't call nothing. <laughs> they didn't call nothing. And that was a big part of the game because when we win that game, we tie the series and we go back to OKC. Yeah. We're going to beat them. We're going to win this. Yeah. They would have gave him no free throw. We was going to win that game. Mm -hmm. They didn't call nothing. That was for the game. They didn't call nothing. We went crazy. Talking crazy to the referees. Sick. And then, man, that's the worst place to play, bro. Oh, easily. Oh, that's the worst place to play in Utah, man. It's crazy how they talk to you out there. They talk wild. It's crazy. <laughs> they man. are ruthless man. out there. Utah. It'd be so crazy. They talk so crazy, and then when you t and then, then we like, if I see you outside of here, you would not say this. <laughs> you would not have this type of energy. <laughs> so that's what really used to make me mad because you couldn't do nothing. You couldn't do one thing. Hey, I'll tell you this right now. Ray on that town. Hey, hey, listen, back in the day. <laughs> I try I not to be. I know. You definitely I did. try not to be because I know where I can go. Yes. So <laughs> I'll try not to be, man. Ray definitely was on that time. I try not what to be. What would you want me to hear, song? Flu what? The D Rose flu, if it's true. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that a true? Is that is, is the D to, is the D Rose flu a real thing? People used to get the D Rose flu. Yeah, yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, they did. They may not admit to it. Yeah, but they did. They yeah. did. I didn't. I, I loved it. Yeah, I love that bump. D Rose, man, and that's another person I ain't give a love to. Let me let me change that. That dude right there is probably the toughest 
hands down, probably one of the toughest point guard I ever played against when he was in his prime. Mm -hmm. When he was in his prime, couldn't nobody touch him, bro. Mm -mm. Nobody, I don't care. CP, whoever, couldn't touch him. And he proved that. Cause he went through everybody. And wanted all the smoke. What? <laughs> Listen, bro. The, the, ball the, was the, the way that man was playing that year, the year he won MVP, the way that man was playing that year, it was crazy how many people was getting sick when it was time to play Chicago. <laughs> It was crazy <laughs> out because of illness. Yeah, I bet you is out for illness. <laughs> you don't want none of that smoke right there. You oh, for that. sure. That man was so fast, man, so shifty. Man, that man just made people fall, bro. He wasn't even doing nothing. <laughs> I'm serious. He wasn't even crossing over. He was just going and changing directions, and people was buckling. <laughs> bro, and that's how fast he was. His hang was time was insane. Oh, my goodness. The way he dunked, man, you remember he dunked on uh, Gordon? Gordon. 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 Listen, play the clip. God damn. He I mean, what, what? What? He dunked on the man still going up. Yes. He wasn't even and then, at his peak yet. And he then was still went going here. Up. Yeah. Come on, bro. You went on the next team when he did the backwards jump. The the backwards. Uh, no, no, no. You no. went on that team where I remember he went. I, I was on the guard. next team when he went baseline. They, uh, I think, uh, Tony Tony Douglas. Tony Douglas was guarding him at the time. uh -huh. And um, he tried to send him down to the baseline, but the big one there <laughs> he took him. off. Yeah. And when he took off, he just took one step. He took one step. He was in the paint. One step, and then he just, yep. just went up. All you can see what people doing is, and then last minute he went down like this. <laughs> <laughs> he put that ball behind his head and dunked it. He used to dunk so hard. It was crazy, man. I'm going to talk about hard. Even yeah. when he threw it down in the rim, it was like a hard dunk. Yeah. Man, I, D -Rose, that D-Rose, man, and a good dude, too. Oh, unbelievable person. Oh, man. Unbelievable person. Good dude, bro. man. Great dude, man. Just one of those dudes that you just like, I wish I could have played with him. Because mm -hmm. I just wanted to see how that was every day mm -hmm. in practice. Like, that's the type of dude I was. I wasn't scared of, like, nobody doing me bad or making me fall because I believed in who I was as a player. And it just... I love that. That's how you get better, mm -hmm. playing against people like that. 100%. But to 100%. see dudes ducking that man for that, for that flu, I don't know what flu that was. Hey, listen, that flu. It was getting that, that flu out of nowhere, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that flu, that flu hurt people. <laughs> Shit. They can't even come to the arena. <laughs> Shit. No, yeah, man, funny. you done played with some greats. Oh, I think man. we got to talk about it. You done played with one of the best scores that ever played this game. Uh -huh. Carmelo Anthony. Yes, sir. Talk about, like, how easy and just – Effortly, it was Listen, night after night. Listen, that's 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 that's, that's my brother, man. To the to, to the day I die, that's my brother. We we've we've been rocking since high school, same McDonald's game camps. We we've, we've done it all together, man. Mm -hmm. And that dude, man, just just the way he can score, how easy it is for him. Is I don't know nobody, I don't know nobody who's better. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah. I'm talking about Tracy McGrady. I'm talking about MJ. I'm talking about. Kobe, LeBron, all these guys, like the way he used to score at every level, mm -hmm. I don't know nobody who's better. Like for real. Carmelo has the best score you ever. <sighs> from from all levels, yeah. From all levels. Post up. Got footwork. Mid-range is impeccable. Mm -hmm. Shoot the three. Athletic, can dunk on you. You can get to the basket. Had handles like a point guard. Like, just I'm just saying, everything, like, whatever you want it, he can give to you. He can you. do it. Whatever you want it. If you want to just, you want this mid-range all game, mm -hmm. I got you. You want me to post you up? Mm -hmm. I got you. You want me to shoot the three? <laughs> I got you. You take him over KD? Yeah, because I haven't seen KD, like, go off in the post like I've seen Melo. I agree. I agree. With that. Now, KD, can he score? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, good gracious. I yeah. mean, yeah, that man can score easily. Like, yeah. He scores easily Easy. for him to be seven feet. Mm -hmm. They keep saying 6'11". That man ain't 6'11". That seven man's feet. seven feet, seven one. Yeah. That man's <laughs> tall, man. But Melo, I've seen Melo score everywhere, bro. And I, I haven't seen KD just get somebody in the post. It's like, I'm just going to do you dirty in yeah, this post yeah. the whole game. I've seen Melo do that. Just post work. All facets. Post work. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So... I, I still got to give that to Melo, man. And I'm pretty sure a lot of dudes will say that, man, especially dudes who really played against this man. For sure. They, like, this man can score from all levels, bro, mm -hmm. at a high level. It ain't just mediocre. It's like, uh, it's high level. And he can handle the ball, too. That's what's crazy. Had the ball on the screen. 
Listen, never saw him get plucked much. I'm not going to say that. But, <laughs> hey, listen, Ray, it's been an unbelievable pod. I mean, I can't think. Y'all got anything else that y'all can think of? I can't think of nothing else. You, uh, <laughs> you want to ask him the question we talked about, the better, the better backcourt, Team USA, Team Canada, or something? No. I mean. You, you don't think it's a conversation? Right? I don't think it's really a conversation. You don't think that's much of a conversation. Better backcourt, Shane and Jamal, or. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of even. I think what with uh, what you call it doing what he did kind of changes everything. With Yamba, oh yeah, with him saying he's going to play with Team USA. With Yamba, yeah. Do you see that? He got his American citizenship, U.S. citizenship, did and he said he's going to play with USA. If he does that, it's a problem. Ain't nobody winning. You got oh. him, Joe Embiid, and Anthony Davis. Oh. If you take those three as your bigs, who's going to beat you? I'm just saying, I saw it on social media, but you can't always believe everything that's on social media. Yeah. But if that is if, true. Oh, if that's true, it's curtain call. It's, it's, it's curtain call. It's over with. Who's going to beat them? That France dude going to be mad as hell. Yeah, that's what I was thinking He's going to be pissed. Rudy Gobert going to be like, he going to get the sickness. He going to get the flu. <laughs> He played that game. Is he defensive? Is he defensive player of the year? Victor Wembanyama's defensive player of the year. Thank you. And it's not. And I'm gonna be real Thank with you, you. And it's not close. It's not even close. People talking about Rudy Gobert. It's not close. This man had nine blocks the other night. This man almost had a quadruple, quadruple double. Quadruple double. He was this close against the potential against, MVP against Jokic. Listen, I'm telling you right now, this it's man, not close. Victor Wembanyama is the. Defensive player of the year, rookie of the year. He will get an MVP. He <laughs> will down. get an MVP. Hands He's down. a freak. He's a problem, bro. He's a problem, I, I, and I like it. And I like the fact that he's he know getting it. better. Yeah. Like, and he's, like, not scared. Not scared He don't care shit. who he plays. He's not scared. And I love that. He's not scared. He want the funk. Yeah. He want that funk. Hey, oh, another question. We got to ask him this. We we definitely gonna ask him a better Brian. What's the what's the what's America's team in the NBA? America's team? Yes. The Lakers. That's what I said. I don't think it's close. That's the Lakers. I mean, that's all everybody that's that's who everybody loves. It's like everybody loves the Cowboys. hmm Everybody loves the Lakers. Agreed. I think that's if you say who's America's team that everybody talks about and they they say, Oh, it's, it's their team, it's the Lakers. Agreed. It's the Lakers. Agreed. Yeah. That's a great explanation, also. <laughs> uh Better Braun. This is this Ooh. has been a bit this has been a big debate here. Better Braun. Mm-hmm. 2012 Braun, mm. right after losing the chip. That's when he was a, a animal. Mm. Straight downhill. This is the year y'all played. No. Mm-mm. Yeah. Y'all might have played them that year. Yeah. That was the year you uh y'all had the squad. Yeah. 2012. Yeah. 2012 Brian or 2018 Brian? That's when he took Jordan Clarkson, Rodney Hood, uh, Larry Nance, JR. Right, he was doing it in all facets. He almost won the finals MVP. I'm going to be honest win. with you. Early Brian. 12? It's better than all of them. Really? The one before that. Which one? The one that was taking Cleveland to the. The finals and the the before he won it, before he went to Miami, that Braun. Think about that. That played against Detroit and what he did to Detroit. So you with the about team he had, that was the to me that was the better Braun. All the, of them was great, put it like that. But to me, playing against him and seeing that was that was the better Braun. The Braun that got swept by uh, the Spurs. Yeah. yeah, that's the best Braun. Yes. Think about that. I want, you, take. I want you to look at them what clips. What year was that? Look at them clips. 2007, bro. Look at them clips, bro, when he played against Detroit, dog. Hey, yes. Hey. And that's what Detroit was. We'll play the clips. Tell you, man. When Detroit was like pff, Chauncey, she, she yeah. Tayshaun Prince guarding Ben Wallace. Ben yeah. Wallace, like big, long Tayshaun Prince guarding you. Tayshaun Prince was, what, 6'10", with a 7'7 seven seven wingspan. A great. Hey, listen. <laughs> and LeBron was a problem then. He was a problem. He was really the only person he had. You might be right, bro. 
Think about that. I want you to think about that. Because he was be- he was beating great teams. Think about that. I'm telling you now. By himself. Because he was- By himself. Yeah. Hey, listen, man. That's another unbelievable pod. <laughs> great listen. Y'all better. <laughs> I'm, I'm listening to it again. But listen, <laughs> Ray, I appreciate you coming on, brother. Man, anytime, yeah. man. Anytime. OG. Appreciate yeah, but, you. Um, it's another episode of Run Your Race. Prize picks. We appreciate you for all the love. We gonna continue. I told you we getting bigger and better. We got the OG. We got a champ. <laughs> Fourteen year career. Hey, we getting bigger and better. Appreciate y'all. Peace. Peace.